Welcome to the channel, folks. Clunkers and Classics. Where last episode, we got the fuel system going. We got fuel coming out of the tank by using probably the return line. Because <laughs> uh, the main line has the fuel pump on it and the tank. And I didn't want to take off the suspension, exhaust and gas tank to clean it, check it, put in a new new stuff there. So we used what was in there, pumped out some old gas, put in some new gas, pumped it out until the, the gas was semi-clean. It's still a little dirty. But anyway, we're using a manual fuel pump right here and I run a line up to here. So it's running on its own. No external tank, boat tank, crap or anything. It's running on its own. Got the cooling system. Got a new aluminum radiator. New radiator hoses. Heater hoses. Uh, everything seems to work. Water pump works. Pumping water. Uh, Got to get, eventually get a new overflow jug and a windshield washer jug. Way before that, we got the exhaust new headers and the exhaust going out almost to the rear, well, towards the rear axle. Not sure what I'm going to do about the factory muffler and tailpipes yet. They're kind of rusty looking, but they're not rusted through. We'll deal with that later. Uh, got a lot of stuff. Got the power steering hooked up, pump. Had to get all this from the uh, parts truck. The uh, transmission and throttle cable bracket. So that's all hooked up. Power steering or uh, power brakes is hooked up. Uh, so it's pretty much done except for the electrical. I uh, went over that all in the last video, lots of rambling, but we'll do go over it real quick. This car came with no wiring harness everything was gutted i was going to make a race car all this ac stuff uh wiper motor all this stuff here uh all this stuff everything was just gutted so years ago i had a helper i got a parts car two parts cars over there one was an 89 v6 and i said listen just take all the harness AC wiper everything from that car and put it onto this one so he did but of course nothing will work it was a v6 fuel injected here's the fuel injectors here for a for a v6 uh, so this is the main plug right here where it plugs in not a fuse block behind there fuse blocks up farther we'll go over that in a little while so anyway, I'm going to take all this back out. <laughs> okay, because he's got, you know, got the little electrical junction box here. So how we're starting it is uh, I use the starter off the parts truck with its harness of wires that go to the starter. Got a new positive cable. It goes down to the starter solenoid, and then the wires coming off it would be, uh, this is one of them. So you hook this up to the distributor, and then this is the starter wire, which you connect to here, and that's how I, I can start it. And then pull this to stop it. That's how I've been starting it this whole time. Uh, but now we want to get it so everything starts by the key, turns off by the key, uh, all the blower motors, the wiper motors, the headlights, the everything works the way it's supposed to hopefully okay so i'm going to take all this 89 harness off and then uh so for, for these type of camaros you need the exact gear the exact engine to make it work this car was a fuel injected engine uh it would have had a fuel injected harness on it but to convert it to carburetor, you would just have to snip off the the computer 
and the injector harnesses and just not use them bypass them pretty simple to do but we don't have a fuel injected harness to do that to this v6 one will won't work so because we don't know if any of these wires here are going to be the same for to work everything else wiper motors blower motors It'd be all different from an 85 to an 89 so the closest i could come up with uh bought off ebay for 200 bucks was a 86 z28 carbureted engine non-fuel injected okay this it has some electrical connections to it not sure exactly what they do here for the choke uh and then a whole these 80s models they got a whole mess of vacuums and i took a lot of this stuff off but uh and this is the ac to when you turn on the ac it pumps up the idle a little bit okay so here's the harness here in the box i haven't even taken it out yet i'm gonna take it out here in a minute this is what i get uh the and it came with the ecm he said it's in perfect shape it was uh in his closet for 20 years he just never used it so uh i'm gonna spread this out see what we got so this is not going to come with the injector harnesses and all that uh since it was a carburetor it'll have the electrical connections to the carburetor but is that compatible beyond the firewall where it plugs in or all them wires going to be the same uh, that's what we need to figure out. So let me just spread this out see what we're looking at and then we'll take off this harness and then plug this harness in and see what we need and don't need. Uh, like I said, I just soon cut all the uh, computer and all that stuff off of it. So that's where we're at guys. So we're hopefully we're going to uh, get this to work by the key on and off and we're going to go over uh we're gonna take all this front stuff apart here i gotta change the throttle or the uh, shifter cable so i gotta take all this off uh we're gonna change the dash so i'm gonna take all that off i already took this bottom piece off here down here uh some of these wires, this was just stuck into a fuse here. I think this is probably for the aftermarket stereo there. Uh, these are probably the factory radio wires. And I think that's, that's, that's an interior light there that was on that, this plastic piece. And uh, I think these are for, might be the rear speaker and the front speaker here. We're gonna see if we can get them working. The speakers don't look too bad right here. Uh, but that's So anyway, we're gonna kind of take that all oh, when they want you to wipe her thing and it's like this I don't know if there's a switch in there. So we took it off I'm gonna take this apart So we need to get all this stuff Basically from the firewall forward this way make sure all this is gonna work make sure we got a wiper thing uh, the power window switches are right here uh and then of course we're going to check out the power window motors and all that so yeah i'm going to be taking off a bunch of this stuff also but for right now we can just right now we're just going to do the harness take out this harness put the other harness on and see if i can figure i i mark some stuff like this for the wiper right here because this is an 89 the 86 harness is that plug going to be the same i don't know that's what i'm going to look at that and then this this plug here is for the cruise control for an 89 v6 uh is the other harness going to be the same we don't know <coughs> i'm going to be looking for stuff like that uh all these plugs here you know how you got i don't know how many wires this one's disconnected you got one wire one plug here plug here plug here uh plug there uh bunch of plugs just in for this ac and blower motor and all that 
Uh, those plugs are all going to be the same from an 86 to an 80. This is all 89 stuff. I don't have any of this stuff for an 85 electrical connections. This plug here. Anyway, if we have to, we'll splice in. I just want to know where the wires are. Okay, so uh, let me uh, let me spread this harness out and I'll show you what I got and where I think stuff <laughs> goes. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'll be back. Okay, guys. I got it spread out. <laughs> I can't tell much about it other than that's where it plugs in. Uh, of course, we, there's another harness here, I guess, for the headlights. But we'll figure that out. Uh, I can't see that the wiper motor would probably be over here somewhere. Uh, that's probably the oil light. I mean, the wiper. I, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, here's the starter wires. I recognize them. That'll go to the solenoid. And then that's the switch for the key to turn on. Not sure what those are for. Okay, then it's just got a little wire going to this big harness here. Uh, there's a big ground that goes to the engine block. See the wiper. See, that's probably the oil sending unit. And this, see the distributor is going to be a lot different in an 86. Uh, that's why I got the old style distributor on there. I bet this is to this to distributor. And we only need one power wire. So it looks like it would be that one. This red one here. So we, that's all we need to tap into the distributor. But of course we'll check with the key first. Turn the key on and make sure that lights up. Uh, that's what it looks like anyway. I can't find the alternator uh, wire unless it's this one here. Because you're going to have a plug, a plug and a, and a wire going into the alternator. Not exactly sure where that is. Oh, here's one plug here. Looks like the same as a wiper or a cruise control. But I don't know what the connections look like on a on an 85 wiper. Okay, so yeah, this this is probably the coolant coolant sensor. Uh, okay, then it's just it's got these two wires connecting into this bigger harness here. Uh, that might be a coolant too. No, this is something for the emissions computer stuff, which you don't need. And this, I think this is what my helper meant when he says he couldn't connect anything under the dash. All these plugs were different. And then this. And I started look. See, I didn't watch my helper do this. I'm thinking this goes over right down in here. It's probably got to take out this thing, and I think it plugs into the interior there. I thought it went down underneath the over here somewhere. But see, there's some plugs here that don't. Yeah, there's one. Not sure what it plugs into. I don't see any plugs this exact either. And I don't see this uh, little junction. That might be part of the other harness for the headlights. Anyway, guys, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. So I think that's where that goes. Uh, I'm just not sure where this is all the... Uh, blower motor ac wire part but we'll we'll have to figure it out somehow some way because there i can hear the comments oh get a schematic no, well there's no schematic from an 85 to a, a tune port to an 86 
carbureted and to make it all work. It's really not going to do me any good. Uh, so, and then there's a computer there. I guess it goes underneath the dash somewhere. I pretty much got to start over from all what my helper did. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll just start by unbolting, <laughs> unbolting that and go from there. I remember it taking them three days to do this. I remember that because I was paying them a hundred a day. I paid them 300 bucks to swap all that stuff over, but I, that includes all the AC stuff and the wiper motor and swapping all that stuff over. Anyway, guys, let me, uh, let me get started with it and I'll, I'll give you the, give you the progress as, as we go. Okay, guys, it just takes a quarter inch bolt right there to take that out. So that plugs in there. Uh, that's the harness that I got. And then this is the, just a little light harness. And it looks to be the same. See, there's four on the bottom, three on top, and they look the same. Uh, so this little harness just goes, it's just this one here. And it just goes to the headlights and the horn. So 85 to 89, it looks to be the same. Uh, but I did notice he didn't have a ground hooked up somewhere right here. Or don't, yeah, that's just a thing of electrical wire. Uh, that needs to be grounded. Uh, we'll see. See, and then it comes back out and up over here. Under here. Oh, that's the, that's the hood. It's under, oh, and then it goes down here. And then underneath, oh, down to the uh, front signal lights. Okay. So, headlights, signals, horn. That's what this one is. So, we just need to, that just snaps into here. And this is the new harness. And we'll just snap it into there. And then just figure out uh, all this, all this crap here. There's a harness that goes underneath this harness. Okay, this little harness is what I just disconnected the windshield washer and the EGR or the vacuum canister thing. And then we get to figure out this for the cruise control for V6. One, we'll just unplug it as we go. And put this in as we go so I can know kind of what where the wipers and all that stuff goes so anyway that's what it looks like guys and uh, I'll be back okay guys plugged in don't know what that goes to don't know what that goes to this one here I'm pretty sure goes to the windshield washer jug and I got a siren alarm thing going off uh but it doesn't quite plug in there i don't believe that an 85 came with this because there's no plug for that this little harness here for the cruise control it's really just a couple of wires and a vacuum that goes right into the firewall i don't know if he took that off the 89 or that was there but i doubt it okay so we don't know what these go to and then it comes around and this is the wiper pretty sure this is for the wiper too for an 85 89 is different I just cut the ends off the 89 but you can see there's six wires there and then uh, damn an alarm and then three down here so it might be best to get an 85 wiper motor to plug that in okay this is the oil centering unit which is right there below the distributor and this has got to be for the distributor 
We only need the power, but I don't know what the other one is. It's probably a power to the computer or something. Uh, but anyway, those go there. And then this will wrap around and go over on this side. So, <laughs> and this is the, the 89 harness. Now, this is what I think he was talking about. A, I don't know if you can see it. But this little harness here plugs in right there into the firewall and uh, it comes up comes up here into all this stuff and there is a few few vacuum lines here uh, and then another separate little harness comes back into the main the main one which then goes down inside there so you have to take the interior dash stuff apart to see where where uh, all that goes pretty sure this had nothing so all this from the 89 and that's where so there's a plug in there and there into the firewall on the inside and that's where he said that the uh, plugs were different and then of course it comes down into here uh, another little relay thing in a junction box and then this stuff i don't know what this these plugs are for either so anyway let me unplug those two and then we'll continue this this will wrap around the distributor go down underneath the ah shit it's gonna have to go all underneath the uh heater core wires well maybe I can just stick them up here anyway I'm just kind of going a little bit out of time okay I'll be back with some more updates okay guys in here took out all the console dash uh, top of the dash now this is all busted up here the one my helper took the harness off it's all it's busted in half this piece is completely busted off and thrown in the back so I guess he he must have had this off to uh, to uh, get that them wires you know there's one plug there so you had to put in all this AC stuff here all all this uh, so this busted up, 89's busted up, the 91's good, but the 91 is contoured all different, and it's got different gauges in it. It's got like one big thing, probably digital, or digital odometer and all that. Uh, so, yeah, and he busted the light switch here. Pull this off and it, it's busted. And that looks like it's a kind of a pain in the ass to get at. It's right in behind here. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to take this whole thing off. Just to get at the wiring and then take the one off the 91 and put it back in here. See if it'll fit. I know I think all this is different. Anyway, I'm going to take all this apart. I'll be back. Okay, guys, it's becoming a real mess. Okay, this plugs into here and goes in and has these three connections. Uh, this is the computer he gave me, but they do not fit in there. Completely different. I looked this up briefly and somebody said 87 to 80. Eight Monte Carlo SS or something and then it's got that plug there so this does not plug into that so first I took this deal off this kick panel is pretty heavy I thought that was a computer took it apart now it's a Bose uh, speaker and amp in there okay so this you know there's the 89 harness and uh 
it was plugged into here like that and then on the floor of the blue 89 was was this one and it plugs in there too looked it up it's 89 v6 fuel injected Google this number comes up to 85 fuel injected actually from a Corvette it said but anyway that's so this must have been a tune port Corvettes only came with tune port so my helper had used my computer and then these plugs from an 89 v6 plugged right in but they don't plug into this one he get the guy give me wouldn't plug into an 86 carbureted computer so anyway there is three except for this i don't know where this goes to here's the third thing is right there it's got one two three and then this i'm not sure what it is uh but it should plug into somewhere if this is from mine from this car it doesn't plug into there unless something plugs from there into there see they're both male plugs so I'm thinking that these will plug in to the 85 computer but I gotta cut cut this off where it connects in there see it's got the three so now I'm in a real mess I was hoping he's so to give me the right one to fit, fit it but so I'll get my little cutting wheel and cut that clip off and plug it into mine uh, but it, it doesn't matter anyway because we're, we're not using a computer or anything but we want it to power on when you turn the key I don't know if any of these wires here is anything in there is going to make a difference between the key turning on and off and having it stay running you know what i mean so anyway it's it's uh quite the mess so anyway i'll be doing that and i'll be back okay guys i cut the end off them uh grinded the clips off there but it still won't fit in there it's still it's it's a little bit too short than the shorter one they just won't plug in so I guess GM does that to keep you from plugging in carbureted harnesses to fuel injected computers I guess even though a V6 fuel injected will fit this or a tune port Corvette motor will fit that so uh it won't plug into this one he, he give me so i i don't know what to do now so anyway i'll figure something out i'll be back okay guys there's the 89 harness out of there now <laughs> i got a real mess of wires here so we'll start over here so i don't know what i need there just for the uh, washer fluid comes along this is for the wiper uh, probably that is too but it won't screw in there okay this is distributor and that's the hot wire it comes on with the key okay so there's my one wire distributor that there's for attack actually that might be for attack not the not the okay so then the uh, harness comes over behind the distributor down there is the oil pressure switch and it's connected it works and that's about all i got <laughs> that i know works so far okay so it comes along here and it's just a mess now uh see where these two connections are the new harness didn't have anything past there and what this does is it goes into this harness and it goes down it goes down there into the firewall 
right then it comes up here and it's this whole harness here for the blower motor this I'm not sure I'm thinking it's for it connects to an AC line or something uh, so the new harness didn't come with any of this so that kind of sucks uh, so all this stuff I just I found the connection for the carburetor there and the weird clip for the uh, uh, choke other than that I don't know what these are I don't know what these are uh, it's got a different alternator I'm thinking this was the alternator thing here but there's no round thing with a with a nut on the end uh, I think it's a new style that one of these plugs into maybe and I, I can't find the uh, temperature temperature wire so we got them got these no idea what they go to uh, same with that same with all this stuff here no idea and then this here so for the starter wires I got that harness from the truck actually these two are from the truck too and uh, connect them all together to the harness and then the purple one is for the comes on with the key engages the starter yeah, I don't know what that is either and then and this was laying on the floor right down there so I thought maybe my helper might have could have figured out where they went or left them loose or something <laughs> anyway this is the uh, these are the plugs that don't plug into anything that I got so I just left them plugged that one in up here so just left that but it's they come over this way So turn the key. See the oil pressure work. The RPM. So it starts on and off with the key. That's really what I wanted. And it, but I didn't really need a whole harness to do that. I want to plug in like the old gauge works. I want to find the temperature gauge, although I could hook up an aftermarket one. Uh, I was hoping the fuel gauge. Then we can't test the lights because of this switch is all. Well, maybe it'll. We'll figure that out. I like said I'm going to take all this apart anyway. And uh, we'll test the uh, see when my helper said a while back nothing plugged in under here I thought that's what he was pointing to that harness that comes in so if that's the case yeah nothing's gonna plug in because I don't have that piece with the new harness that harness is just for the computer which, like I said, we don't need, and it apparently doesn't need to be hooked up for anything. Uh, so anyway, that's a, that's a start anyway. Uh, I'm trying to think whether I got an 85.6 and see what plugs into this. Uh, if not, I can just run a power wire from there basically one of these power wires up a truck and yeah I think I'm just gonna splice these in and as far as the rest of this I guess I can just cut it all off I mean I don't need it right I really just need the gauges and the lights and everything to work signals now I guess I'll do some snipping but yeah 
See all these crap on these 80s cars, man. They just got so many things, emission crap that it plugs into and uh, none of it's really needed. Uh, trying to think what that one was. Maybe that's a temperature. So I got a temperature deal down there. Of course, the engine's off a of van. Just got a little tab on it. So I kind of had to lay it out here to where I knew something was going to fit so I could figure out where these other wires would go down and go down and fit. So anyway, guys, it's getting kind of late. We're going to probably quit here in a little bit and then uh, go over it tomorrow and start snipping wires and make it look good. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to try to get those lights, make sure all the light signals and all that stuff works. But, okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, let's go over what I've done so far. I thought about cutting all the wires I'm not going to use out of the way. But then I thought, well... There's going to be AC wires in here for an AC compressor later on. Uh, I'm probably not going to put one on, but a uh, future owner might. And might want to put it back to factory. Who knows? But, you know, I showed you all these friggin' uh, connections. and So I kind of got it zip tied up kind of where it supposed to go uh but of course this loom would go down you can see a loom there it would go across the valve cover and uh wrap around a little bit better but uh, i wanted to kind of keep it so it's see all this is no good this is all oh don't need it but i haven't found the temperature gauge yet uh, I just looked online. I think it's supposed to be a yellow and black looking thing like this. And then the center itself has its own little plug coming out of it. I don't know. I'll, I'll look for it here. But anyway, yeah, 99% of this harness we're not even using. I tied in from the truck wires that I kept. Uh, first I tried this from the harness, I cannot find the alternator wire. It's supposed to be a wire like this with a loop on it. it it's not on there. So the uh, truck harness did have the alternator thing on it, uh, but this is the wire coming. Power goes in here, and then it comes out here, and I don't know where it goes. So I kind of stuck it there, but it doesn't this is temporary i figure out where that's supposed to go uh so anyway the alternator does work it'll run and then you take the positive off and it stays running but the gauge doesn't go to 12 or 14 it just stays about eight or nine or something like that um so yeah this stuff here i think i'm just gonna wrap it stick it down in here <laughs> but I haven't got the uh, blower motor and stuff working yet. Uh, what else in there? Oh, I changed the uh, the cable here. See this? This cable was actually bent in half, and it's supposed to be plastic from here to here. That was that broke, but the main part is this little thing that holds it in in there broke so anyway it wouldn't shift took the one off the 94 fiber it was different but i figured figured it out that uh i had to where this mounts on the transmission those two holes i had to move it over one hole and it worked perfect so that's on there it'll shift now uh what else See, there's not much on this side other than this plug for the windshield washer fluid. Uh, and then the wiper. And then the rest is is all over there. Well, the distributor. Uh, I tried 
I don't know if I mentioned, I tried hooking this uh, tack into this other hole here and it just pegs it out so it doesn't work or anyway I was hooking up some ground wires there there not exactly sure what these little things these are probably from the van but I just kind of bent it out of the way I think it was probably for the bracket there or something but or big air cleaner or something I don't know uh yeah this uh power steering pumps off it needs to you can see here it needs to it needs to be shimmed over and the right bolt long bolt put in there so it's it's tight but it's bent like that anyway it'll it'll work okay so i think i'm going to save all this dash attempt to put the 91 dash in here uh it's like i said it's all one big gauge it's different but this stuff may fit in there uh okay so yeah here's the shifter cable the only problem is it had a different deal on there and i kind of cut off with the grinding wheel half of that and put it on there it seemed to clip on there but it's supposed to have just a little metal deal with it with a clip through it like that so we'll see if that pops off we'll have to do something i guess there's might must be a metal loop in there uh let's see um the power windows buttons right here this is for the driver's side and that's the passenger side so if you turn the key on and i push this down there it goes it goes slow but it goes it goes faster all, all these GM's like this I uh, do when it's running it, it'll go faster uh, I'm not sure oh the passenger side did go down I only got one good switch the other switches but I think I got some good switches in the uh, parts car fixing to get them uh so we'll test them out while it's running um i thought that was just clicking i tested that one first and it was just clicking i was listening to it but i guess i wasn't watching it was actually working okay um yeah this is for the stereo here the only thing that i can't get working is the uh blower stuff but the other harness comes out in behind here somewhere. That's why I really need to kind of take that dash apart. And they may not be hooked up. Uh, what else is it? Oh, the lights. So I jam this in here. Pull it out. And this little, for the console works. Uh, <laughs> I first tried it, nothing came on. Well, every friggin' light in here is burnt out. And now this one that I just put in there, when you click the high beams on, it goes out. But this is burnt out. This was burnt out. This one was broken. Swap that over and that over. And then uh, a bulb in there. And then this one, the hair was no bulb in it, and the socket's all rusty. So I got a splice in a socket there. Uh, these fog lights are right here. And I don't think there's any place in the harness for it. Uh, he took that off of 89, 89 V6 car. So I didn't see any harness for that so I don't know what we can do about that uh, so yeah they work and the tail lights work this is a little marker bulb here it's burnt out on this side just needs a marker there but the those light up license plate light lights up uh, the only thing is I can't get the uh, four ways or the uh, 
four ways. Nothing. Can't hear nothing. Got the key on. Signals. Nothing. Okay. Uh, checked all these fuses. They're all good. There was one missing right there. Or no, right there. Yeah, right there. I put in. So I got to trace out and see why. Maybe a little flasher thing. Somebody somebody took it out or something so yeah I still got I still got a little ways to go uh, I'm gonna work on it a little bit more before it gets dark and then uh, see if I can get the rest of this stuff working uh, I think I was missing something I wanted to talk about but I think that's about it. Uh, yeah. Let me turn off the lights. And... So yeah, this little end here for the light switch is busted. So we got to change over that. I think there's a good one in the... Uh, there, we turn it off. Good one in that 91. pressure works see the uh, battery just goes to there oh there it goes up a little bit oh, the rpm seems to yeah it's a lot higher than it's supposed to be the uh, gas gauge doesn't work so we'll try out the it goes a little faster Those, uh, those motors are pretty cheap. I mentioned the price before. I forget what it was. 40 bucks for a pair. Something like that. Uh, a pain in the ass to put in. Because you got all these rivets here. <laughs> I'd rather not put them in. But I may. And then that's the. I haven't checked that. That's for the power lock. I haven't checked them. I'm not too worried about them. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff working. Just pretty much got to get this working and the uh, blinkers four ways, I think. I don't think we're going to get the gas gauge working. Uh, and I guess we'll just leave all this computer stuff unplugged and not going to worry about any of that. Oh, didn't check the horn. Oh, horn works. Well, it did work. <laughs> it worked once. Anyway, wasn't too concerned about that, but y'all heard it. Okay, so yeah, let me uh, let me get some more stuff done, and then I'll probably uh, finish that exhaust. Uh, remember from the ep couple episodes back there, this is that whole pipe and header system I got. So all I got to do, it's just all, all pushed in and uh, just put a couple of clamps from the headers to them pipes. There's two pipes coming into one. And then I may get a pipe from there to there and weld it in. But see, I left it all loose because of that uh, shifter cable and stuff, but... I did that with it all in there, so I think it's I think it's all good now. So we can, uh, oh yeah, got to put two clamps there, there, the other side, and there on the other side, and make sure they don't leak. I don't think they will. And then we'll run a pipe and check out this rusty Flowmaster looking muffler and tail pipes back there. I don't really really want to buy a whole back end set, but. It's not rusted through or nothing, just surface rust. 
So we'll hook a pipe from there to there, test it out, see how it sounds. It's pretty, pretty friggin' loud right now. But that's a straight, straight headers basically. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing that too. Okay, I'll be back. Got some aluminum tape in the mail. I think you can buy this stuff at, you know, Home Depot and stuff. So I just wrapped up them spark plug wires a little bit. Uh, I'm going to wrap up, even though I got the starter wires close to the block underneath there, uh, I'm going to wrap them up too here in a little bit. I'm going to get under there. Yeah, what I wanted to say was, you think this, <laughs> this is a lot and a hassle to go through with all of these connections that you don't really need. Uh, which if the original harness was on there, it would be easy to cut what I don't need off. But like I said before, the original harness from this car was stripped and it's gone, never to be seen again. Uh, and these 80 models, they just get worse. Year by year, they get worse and worse and more and more of this bullshit stuff uh on there emissions and by the way this fan belt here was for a smog pump uh I believe right there it's all that and it had the manifolds up with those tubes and everything just it's they're a real mess guys and year by year it gets worse in the 80s then you get into the vats key and the wire or something screws up on that you're screwed you can't start that car and it's all in the in the computer see so all that stuff is wired into the computer uh then it starts with the transmission is run by the computer and more and more stuff is run by that computer now as you can see you don't need a computer here for this old, uh, well it's actually the same year engine but so anyway, what I'm saying is, this is why I don't really like messing with these 80 models. You know, the 82 El Camino was like that, but luckily the guy that I traded it for, he'd cut all that off. And all it had, all it has is a big thick harness like this that's just cut off and wrapped. I think it's up underneath the coolant thing because uh, he put an older, actually 1974 engine in there. and had it like I did so uh yeah but if you were to mess with the original engines and stuff see that's why you had to take the distributor out of here and then the later models the computer constru controls the distributor and spark and all that stuff but see these engines you can put in an older one wire distributor but yeah, they get worse and worse. That's why I really don't like messing with these 80s models. And and especially these Camaros, Z28s, Irox. They're, they're pretty much all like this. They've all been butchered up wiring and it's engine swaps. And that's just a few that are still left because these things were a dime a dozen. They were all over the place in the 80s, 90s. But I bet 90% of them got wrecked, rusted crushed so yeah there's not many left so now they're worth a little bit more back in the day you could pick these up for peanuts but yeah they're all going to be like this it, you know you'll find the rare one that's been you know low mileage sitting in a barn somewhere someone's garage or they babied it but 90 percent of the ones that are actually out there running around are going to be all butchered up like this with different engines and everything so uh this is what you got to go through guys if you you know i kind of wanted it hooked up kind of factory wise and make it look halfway decent but we're, we're not getting there it's going to look like a, a mess underneath the hood so that's the way it is okay guys uh i just wanted to mention that okay i'll be back okay guys yeah, hook up the battery. Okay, I shimmed up this power steering pump, so it's pretty much straight now. Put some shims down here and put this bolt in. 
straighten it out. So that's a lot better now. It's pretty tight. Uh, the carburetor had a running here a little while ago and it was way too low. Had to up the idle. So it's got a mind of its own. It's either up too high or uh, too low. So we may have to get a $150 eBay special uh, Chinese knockoff like the one on the 82 El Camino. Okay, what else did I do under here? Uh, well, this windshield washer pump is not supposed to be here because it's from a 89 and 86 say uh, doesn't have the pump in there it's got the pump in the uh, motor so I'm gonna have to get a motor it's like 80 80 bucks or 89 bucks so I'm gonna have to get one so it'll these are what's supposed to plug into it um, so yeah and these things are not cheap they're like 50 60 bucks each So anyway, I don't know where this goes to. This uh, this here, I thought it went to there and just had a different plug, but no. There are two green ones. Hell, that might be the coolant temperature. Okay, let's look at the exhaust. I've been welding on this all for a while. Okay, I really like the header and pipe setup. If you haven't watched that video, got the headers and two pipes and then the Y pipe right up to there all in one set fit perfectly and then I I had cut it back here so I had to get a piece of pipe from there to there welded that up and look at the back real quick like I said, it's not leaking, it's just rusty looking. <laughs> it's like a Flowmaster or something. And then these, uh, it was kind of bent this way. So I kind of spread it apart. And anyway, I put two hangers there. Extra ones. Um, but anyway... It's not going to hit anything. And see, the gas tank is up here. Take the gas tank off. you got to take the, the exhaust system off. Then these suspension bars. You'll leave that bar there. This bar. Just a real pain in the ass get at that gas tank. But, the gas gauge started working. I'll show you that here in a minute. So anyway, it sounds, it sounds really good. Okay, I think that was it. I wanted to show you. It's still, it's, it run, it kind of popped and you could smell that bad gas. It's running on bad gas. Uh, battery gauge went up see it's almost 13 the gas gauge uh, it should have about a quarter tank in there it'll go down quarter tank and the old gauge works uh, I had it in gear speedometer does work anyway Sounds pretty good.
click or something there. I don't know if that's an exhaust leak or... I keep tightening up the headers there. I can't see any leaks. But anyway, she sounds pretty good. Yep, still runs on a little bit. The timing could be off. I'm thinking about buying some of them LED headlights because these two are burnt out. Then the high beam on this one's burnt out, like I said. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm gonna order a whole bunch of stuff for these these new reservoirs and windshield wiper motor and maybe a carburetor. Uh, I don't know. But I had it uh, in gear. It run through all the gears. So it gets all the gears, reverse, everything. Uh, I got no brakes. I used some paper towels here and got out all what was left of the brake fluid. And then I put some new stuff in and as I put new stuff in, all these flakes come up. So anyway, uh, it's gonna have to be bled and checked for leaks. So I don't think I can uh, take it for a ride anyway. But we know it runs and uh, go see the gears. Uh, like I said, I think pretty much the wiring, I think I'm just gonna stick this down in here. Oh, I was looking at a Maple Motors video, old video of a 86 Z28. Compressor is here. This friggin' hose is supposed to come like this but nine times out of 10, they give me the wrong hoses anyway. Anyway, the uh, I'm missing a bracket too. So anyway, the AC compressor is here. Two AC lines come across onto the shroud and into, into it here. So this is right. Uh, yeah, what else that? I've just been kind of looking at videos and pictures and seeing if I could see where the uh, temperature control. Other than that, I think everything's working. I just got to find out all this mess. I got to find the uh, temperature temperature sender deal. There's actually three. There's another plug. Almost looks like that way underneath there on the block. Not that one there, but there's one below it. But it looks, anyway, there's those two, one over there. I'll find it eventually, I guess, and uh, if not, once I've hook up an aftermarket one. Other than that, all the other, all the other gauges work, speedometer works. So anyway, guys, I think we'll leave it at that. I didn't really need all this harness. I could have probably rigged in the other one but at least we know everything works now well except for like I said there's a harness coming out back in here somewhere and I think this probably plugs into it uh, those are some vacuum lines wherever this yeah that goes back there too see so we'll trace that but we'll do that. Other than that, everything works. Other than, you know, power windows and all that. We checked all that. But I think I'm going to take apart all this dash. Because like I said, it's all busted here. We're going to take all this plastic out. And then we're going to take it all out of the 91. And see if it fits in here. I'm hoping I can take this whole section out separately. And put it in the 91. So the 91's like perfect. Not the, not the cover, but all the plastic. And I think it's the same. This deal here in the console is the same that could mount up to it. So we'll save that for next video. And uh, I got about three dash pads. Find the best one. And we'll glue that other dash pad on there. And... Uh, we're going to, I'm going to hook up that stereo. It's got all the plugs to it. It just, uh, anyway, 
we're gonna check out the stereo and these speakers because they look new those two up there then these ones and uh, make sure all the speakers are wired up um, and then we'll do the dash pad too next video so we'll re replace this and the pad and hopefully figure out the wiring here get the stereo going button up these wires here and all that we'll save that for next video and then uh, we just got a ton more work to do the parts car uh, as far as I can tell they're dirty but as far as I can tell they're not cracked so we're gonna have to drag one up here because the only way I can take it off with a tool is a uh, is this air tool so I got to bring it up here close to the air and uh, we'll do that eventually no use no use buying a new one when I have a used could used one and yeah we'll stick all this computer back in not hooked up and stick all that back together we'll do all that next video so yeah oh that's what I wanted to show you the power seat works even see and all the little tilt up down and everything works I'm just gonna mount that in there but anyway uh, that's a big plus see that's what I wanted to work I want everything to work or fixable so yeah we got the power windows roll them up and down a bunch more times make sure they work uh, we got gray door panels from the parts car because new door panels are hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, so I think we got and all the little plastic stuff we got all that's good on the I believe the 91 but it's gray but that's okay we can either paint it or something so yeah we got that coming up button up all these doors put on the door panels uh, figure what what we can get for free the dash stuff door panels all that because I'm, I'm gonna be spending money on all, all that other stuff I was telling you about figure out something to do with the headliner but anyway before I ramble on too much oh yeah and the AC is this this should work they do come out the passenger side so but I didn't put this in there everything's getting so expensive you know these used to be like 60 bucks for a new one and i just soon put in a new one i don't know what they are now just in case it's you go know, through all that work and it's got a little pinhole leak somewhere from being thrown around now there's the stereo we'll see if we can get that working that is a sony and a cd so anyway tons of work guys coming up uh <laughs> And might as well keep going on it right now i think it's runner it runs and it, it'll drive uh oh i gotta check i want to check the rear end fluid i'm just going to uh top it off usually i would change it but this is the posi rear end i showed got the posi tag on it and it's going to have that additive in there and i don't feel like screwing around buying that additive uh last time i bought some when i did my corvette over there i but you have to buy the AC Delco and it was pretty expensive and I ordered it through eBay anyway we're just going to top this off we want to make sure that it's not empty when we go for a rip in it but yeah we got the brakes to bleed or whatever and then we can I think we're pretty much done underneath other than that rust on the shoulder here right here right there it's not real real bad but uh, I got a parts car once we drag the parts car up here for the windshield I'm gonna go ahead and cut a section out of out of the parts car and we'll eventually weld it weld it in here now we gotta take up take the seat and the carpet and everything out but oh well we might as well do it that's another free free uh, deal there don't have to buy no none of that so yeah just tons and tons of work on this damn thing but uh 
I think we can get it pretty much off the jack stands anyway, and it's drivable, so I can move it, move it around. Uh, well, I'll do the brakes, brakes, differential fluid top off, and then I think we can take it off the jack stands for now. So anyway, guys, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, it's coming along. I don't know how far I want to go go with it, but. I might as well keep on going, I guess. So, uh, yeah, like, comment, share, all that stuff. Um, subscribe, bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Click it. It's free. doesn't cost anything. Oh, here's another. Hopefully I got a good driver's mirror. Got a tree that fell on the Black 91 uh, a couple of years ago. Hopefully I got it. Well, this I could probably just buy the mirror glass replacement. But anyway, just finding more and more stuff. You know, these are ninety bucks for the pair. I'm surprised these aren't. These usually get all weather cracked. But anyway, just tons of stuff to go on this car. Uh, so anyway, we'll see y'all next video. Thanks everybody for watching.